Listening to uh, Charlotte just listened to an impact investing session. It's interesting. Hello. Really? This morning? Yeah. Just zero projects. So I should. I know. I. Ladies. Good morning. Hello. Well, good afternoon for me, and good morning to you. Uh, we hear you. Uh, I should tell everybody that you're actually online now. Um, I think you're on mute. Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. You yes. can hear me. Excellent. <laughs> That's really good. Well, I better introduce myself first for all the people who are on the internet. I'm Tom Butcher with the Essel Foundation, but I'm not the important person here. The two important people are the ones I can see on the screen in front of me who are in no order of preference, Francis West of Francis West Company and Charlotte Dales of Inclusively. Welcome, welcome for joining me here at the Zero Project, if virtually. What I'd love to do first is ask each one of you, I don't mind which order, um, to introduce yourselves and say a wee bit about your uh, initiatives, your companies, and then from there I have um, Three, I think I would consider them fairly in-depth questions that I'd like to throw at you that you can bat around with yourselves or with me. And then I'm going to stop us about five minutes towards the end because our wonderful flip chartist Petra is going to depict things visually and graphically and we'll go through it right at the end. Anyway, over to you two. Whoever wants to start. Charlotte, why don't you go first? Awesome. Okay, well, um, I'm Charlotte Dales, and I'm the CEO and founder of Inclusively. Um, about five years ago, I was selling my first company to American Express, and around that same time, my cousin became the first licensed facialist in the state of Florida with Down syndrome. And I knew after getting my first facial from her that this would be my next company. I saw the value of an employer making an accommodation for my cousin and the impact that it had on her career. And I wanted to figure out how can we use technology to help employers provide accommodations at scale. Great, thank you. Francis, Hi, over I'm, to you. <laughs> uh, I'm Francis West. I'm founder of Francis West Co. Uh, it's a global strategy advisory company working with both private and uh, nonprofit and also startup um, creating uh, digital accessibility and digital inclusion strategy from the top so that um, it's not just a compliance or a, philanthrop a philanthropical uh, initiative, but a really a business imperative. Uh, it's really based on some of the experience and work I did at IBM as IBM's uh, first chief accessibility officer and uh, really um, look forward to sharing this um, kind of a journey with both the uh, Zero Project um, uh, audience and also especially a startup as, uh, as they innovate uh, to really transform the disability and digital inclusion industry. Great, thank you very much indeed. And I'd, I'd like to pick up uh, a word which I think both of you use, but you particularly, Francis, which is transform and transformational. Um, and this is something I have a wee bit of experience in what I do, but um, could you um, share with me what you think the senior executive's role is in leading transformational business and workplace change post-academic, uh, not <laughs> academic, post-pandemic? Francis. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, the word transformation is, I think, the, uh, the word uh, especially post-pandemic. I think one thing the uh, pandemic had taught us is that, um, you know, every human being on this planet, we are interconnected. And at any given point, uh, we could be impacted uh, in, in such an extent. And, and the, um, the closeness of the individual as humans, I think, is coming into the foreground. And the second thing is that the technology is underpinning our connection um, as, a, as a society, as the world. And because of that, the topic of um, uh, disability or uh, digital inclusion become that important. Uh, in my work, as I mentioned, uh, I'm really a technology first person uh, because I spent 30 plus years at IBM. What I realized is that a lot of times when we talk about technology, we actually 
have not really put center in the center the human needs and human wants. And I think pandemic really taught us that uh, we need to be very, very conscious of the human uh, human needs and also the individual differences in us. So I think for the uh, executives, either at the boardroom level or the C-suite level, um, some of them, but many of them are still not ma making the connection that the digital transformation, which by the way, is the word, word uh, in the boardroom, everybody's talking about digital transformation as the um, competitive strategy, but many uh, of them have not made the connection over to digital inclusion. And that's what I think uh, is so important that if we can combine or build our digital transformation strategy based on digital inclusion, then that's truly transformative for all humans, not just some people. Wonderful, thank you so much. And um, to go to a um, senior executive, indeed CEO, Charlotte, what would you say? Um, so I would say that, you know, in, in the work that I'm doing um, inclusively is an inclusion platform that helps um, connect candidates who are requesting accommodations to employers in a way where they can scalably upgrade their existing processes to be to provide more inclusive interview process and screening process. And so what I've seen um, and how I view the role of an executive is that Companies who are really serious about inclusion have to do the upfront work to reap the benefits of sustainable, scalable, and replicable success. Companies who are focused on getting access to pipeline and placement out the gate are not laying the foundation required to have success long term. I think a common misconception we see across all organizations is that the current state of disability employment and really diversity for that matter is because candidates are not applying to jobs. But candidates aren't just sitting around not applying for jobs. The problem is that they are applying and companies' traditional screening and interview processes are built upon exclusionary algorithms that are filtering out uh, candidates for things like a gap in their resume. And if they're not being filtered out, they're being put through an interview process that's the exact same for every single person, meaning only certain types of candidates can succeed. So real change requires change management. And I think, you know, tr transformation is a, a nicer way where in the, you know, employer speak, it's really change management. And that requires a C-suite. Um, to be the executive sponsor and the escalation point for ensuring the change happens. And most importantly, that its employees are not resisting the change and see the long-term benefit to the company by making the change. Great. Thanks so much. And I think this brings us on to, on to the, the, the next point, which is um, how, uh, how can we make people understand that disability is more than just an inclusion label. How can we how can we enable a new way of um, let's call it workplace productivity and and really purpose for all? Charlotte, can I start with you on that and then over to Francis thereafter? Yeah. So um, when I started out, uh, you know, working on this company, I, I met Frances very early on, and she's definitely the person who's really pushed me and opened my eyes to see this. But designing for people with disabilities is really just designing for everyone and so that everyone can be included. And universal design benefits everyone. And for businesses, it doesn't just open you up to an incredibly valuable talent pool but it also means you're creating and marketing products and services to include the one in four to five people who have a disability. It actually means more customers as well. Um, so I think that uh, you know inclusion is, is part of it, but inclusion just means accessible to everyone. Um, so designing for people with dis disabilities is actually creating a, a, an upgraded process for everyone. Thank you, Francis. Yeah, I mean, I want to um, add on to what Charlotte just said that, you know, certainly uh, universal design is the kind of a, uh, the central theme here. And in addition, if you think about it, because we are at a uh, zero project summit, which focused on disability, um, it, I think if you look across, uh, there's two things that are common thread, which is aging and, and disability. If we if we stay as human, as you gain, you know, as you get older, you're going to acquire disability. Or if you live through your life, 
you're going to acquire disabilities either through accidents or sickness and all that. So there is such a common theme about disabilities um, lived experience that I think the executives or the C-suiter uh, have not really um, thought about. And that if you are for, for example, uh, for example, uh, human-centered design, which is a catchword everybody's talking about, then how can you not include people with disabilities? Because mm. they are the what I call, you know, the ultimate human um, uh, experience um, and, and, and human ability that will give us the knowledge to create the better product and better um, uh, differentiation. So all in all, I think there is this, um, there's still this of uh, what I call the cultural gap or perception gap about when you think about working in a digital inclusion or accessibility, you're working on, on them, you know, versus yeah. us. I have a phrase that it's not about them, it's about all of us. Once you start making that kind of uh, thinking or attitudinal or cultural shift, it's about all of us, then all of a sudden you will realize at the C-suite, at the business uh, top, the decision maker level, that by focusing on, on this, and, and also just uh, echo what Charlotte just mentioned earlier, that you really need to have a holistic uh, approach to this. Uh, in, in, in the technology uh, term, you need to have a platform that's sustainable. Otherwise, frankly, we have seen a lot of uh, companies will publish, for example, statements, right? Either it's accessibility statement or inclusion statement, but it could potentially sound hollow or inauthentic if you are not backed up by real investment uh, into a infrastructure um, technology, such as, you know, in Charlotte's case, the employment platform to really sustain um, and also to scale in your business. Great. And that brings me to my last, um, my last question. You mentioned the word platform and you mentioned the word investment. So um, what do you think are the kinds of workplace platforms that enterprise companies need to invest in if we're going to lay, which one must do, a special significance on flexibility, adaptability, and scalability? Charlotte. Um, I, I can jump in. Um, so I think that uh, it's kind of, you know, g going off the, the previous question, that the benefits of creating an inclusive screening and interviewing process lays the foundation for the, the flexibility, adaptability, and scalability that all employees are, and candidates are really looking for now. So people have been attributing the great resignation and the war on talent to the pandemic, but these cultural changes started happening way before the pandemic. So in 2016, millennials became the largest generation in the workforce, and this demographic started changing the criteria upon which they assess jobs. So they wanna work for companies that have work-life balance, that value soft skills, like a work ethic on the same playing field as hard skills. And ultimately they wanna work for companies that are innovative and have values. And this is really different from historical workforce generations um, who were looking for jobs more based on salary and title. This generation is now looking for companies with culture and money doesn't really buy you culture. Um, so you really have to invest in, in the platforms that are gonna help you get there. And the pandemic just really accelerated this movement. And now people are self-disclosing at far higher rates than before. So about 25% more year on year. And in general, everyone wants to customize their employment and essentially work for companies that are accommodating and have values and promote equality. And so I think investments need to be made in, in, in platforms that help you build that infrastructure to be flexible, to help big organizations be a bit more nimble and flexible like so, smaller organizations um, and bringing accommodations and your flexibility and your process and your benefits right to the front door so that everyone who's looking at your company can see that and it makes you really competitive to attract and retain the best talent and the most diverse talent, especially in the new generation of the workforce. Um, and I think an inclusion is just the best example of demonstrating to people that you have a positive company culture. Great, thank you so much and I couldn't agree more. Francis. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, Charlotte pointed out, um, we are in a uh, pandemic shift, we are also in a generational shift, right? I mean, 
Charles is certainly um, not just talking about millennial. She is a millennial. <laughs> and uh, so, so her perspective in building into her platform, just like many of her comp uh, compatriots, um, is viewing the world very differently. Right. I mean, the gig economy, for example, is is booming and, and, and partially because, again, pandemic kind of accelerated the remote working um, gig economy. So I think the, the C-suiters, um, especially if you are a growth, growth oriented uh, company, uh, senior executive decision makers, you really have to um, listen very, very um, uh, intentionally and then also learn that there is a completely different expectation. And in addition to, I think, um, a different value the millennial is looking for, and, and therefore, if you are a, a growth company, uh, you need to acquire talent, you really have to think about what is your best effective um, uh, employment platform. And in this case, a lot of times we think about employment platform is just kind of a one-off as a recruiting you know, platform. But, I, but in this case, we're talking about end-to-end, -end, right? And it's not just recruitment, uh, but uh, how do you enable a candidate to join your company and throughout the process to gain uh, knowledge and insight and also training for your own uh, HR um, um, uh, staff as they you know, learn to deal with a new breed or new kinds of uh, workers, uh, some of them remote, some hybrid, uh, and all these differences, you know, it needs to be, is, even though it's nuanced, needs to be taken into a platform consideration. So a platform decision, in this case, through technology, uh, the criteria has to be built upon whether it's a very uh, nimble and uh, agile and adaptable uh, platform. A lot more sophisticated, frankly, than the last generation of employment platform that we have seen or have experienced. And last but not the least, I would say that um, I think uh, uh, the new generation uh, or collectively even the old generation like myself, we're looking, we're looking at purpose, right? We're looking at a company that is purpose driven and also principally um, uh, have a principle in integrity, especially now we live in a world where everything is so uh, supposedly fluid, uh, but that, uh, that actually translates into lacking sometimes of uh, the core. So I think uh, it's a perfect time for this um, the C-suite to really look at this um, the topic, in this case, inclusion, as the foundational to the, for example, the some of the um, uh, discussion at the, at the highest level, ESG environment, uh, social and uh, governance, a model as a measurement of a company's authentic, you know, adherence to their responsibility, and then translate that into action and investment of a platform where you start with the talent acquisition. It's, it's just, um, it's not just nice to have, but a must, must do. Absolutely. Well, you know, I just draw one issue with you there, um, Francis, with where you describe yourself as the older generation. I have many years on you, so I don't know what that puts me at as a kind of geriatric, I think. Um, I shall, as they say in the States, I shall take that on um, advisement. Um, I'd like to kind of try, a, a, we're not up yet on time, but I, I wanted to kind of bring everything together in a way and just ask you whether you would ag agree with me on one thing, which is what we've looked at um, in these three topics um, is, and the, how we've looked at it shows you something which is immensely complex. It is also something that you pointed out, um, Francis, requires to be looked at holistically. Um, and in my experience, whether it's inclusion, accessibility, or as you mentioned, ESG, um, in companies anyway, the only people who really do or indeed should have that sort of purview are the CEOs, the people right at the very top. So would you agree that actually in in order to get anything to work anywhere, you have to get buy-in right from the top. And if you don't, you're going to face an uphill battle. I think if you're looking for system to change, you know, systemic issues, it has to come from the top. 
um, you know, choosing which this platform or this platform, those can be made, you know, down within the appropriate teams, but the decision to make the change and the, and the person who's going to ensure the change happens, it needs to be from the top. Right. And Francis, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why going back to when we started, I think uh, post pandemic, uh, we really have to not just to change, but to rethink and reframe, right, and regenerate um, a new breed of, um, frankly, leaders uh, mm -hmm. that can understand that um, that we are at a different point. We are at a very different, also the business uh, maturity right now. I think in the past, even uh, just five years ago, you can kind of separate, you know, the business uh, from a social, you know, um, a movements, but. We know that social movement like Me Too or uh, George Floyd uh, situation here in the United States has a profound impact on business. So the new breed of uh, um, leaders in the C-suite really has to have a broader perspective. Um, but just because the, um, the business responsibility now is expanded beyond just profit, you know, now we're, we're hearing the term stakeholder in addition to shareholders. That doesn't mean that um, it's going to be, it, 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 it almost sounds complex, uh, and it is in cases it can be complex, but on the other hand, it's one step at a time, right? I mean, this is one of those things you can start and be very intentional and start, for example, in one area. It could be employment platform, you could be communication platform, it could be your development platform. Just get started, take some action. I think this is and one thing that I would like to stress is that this is a topic at a C-suite level, has to be top down, but at the same time, it takes implementation, execution, and action at the ground level, and everybody can start with one step at a time. Great, thank you. You, you really jumped in there before I even had a chance to ask um, my very final question to each of you. You've answered it, which would be, what would be your call to action be? So, Francis, your call to action is Take the first step, go from there, but there's got to be commitment. Charlotte, what would your call to action be? Um, I would say it's, it's similar. It's, you know, don't wait until you're ready, just get started. But I also think the main call to action from an executive perspective is to um, back up what you're saying in the market with what you're doing internally. Great. Thank you very much indeed. And at that point, we're approaching the end of our time, so I would like to um, call across Petra, who is going to show us how she has depicted all your incredible wisdom graphically. And it is, um, and Frances will be able to tell you, because I'm sure she's seen this before at our conference, but maybe you haven't, Charlotte. It's just I wonderful. Okay, here we go. Really cool. Thank you. Well, uh, well, a lot of innova uh, innovation-driven things that are happening. Um, I tried to catch it all, but I probably missed some of it. Let me start right here. Um, the question was, what changed post-pandemic? And well, yes, there was a lot of change going on post-pandemic, but actually change started much earlier than that. We are facing new generations on the market, on the um, workforce, and that's why change already started before the pandemic, but the pandemic showed us that we're all interconnected all around the world. So um, there's a big mind shift going on, and that's why we have to make sure that this one size fits all, like job interviews, jobs, but also products. Um, that's not state of the art anymore. Um, Rather than that, we should better have universal design. So we make an inclusive process so that everybody's included. And we have inclusive design talking about platforms like finding new stuff, but also HR platforms for other information and create a mind shift in leaders and HR responsible people. Um, I, ca I caught the word purpose. I think uh, that's one of the words we are looking for when we're looking about integrating people with disabilities into the workforce. And from a business success point of view, I think I can summarize it with, um, we walk up the success, uh, up to success together. 
um, taking the first step and then continue going. And it's a top-down but also a bottom-up approach. So all together we can create this transformation that is necessary to have a business life for all. Thank you. Petra, Amazing. thank you. Yeah. Oh, it is absolutely superb. Do we, do we get a copy of this picture? Yes, indeed you do. Both of you, <laughs> both of you do. Um, ladies, thank you so much for your time today. I have thoroughly enjoyed our discussion. I hope it's been okay for you. I'm absolutely sure that um, the people who've joined me online have enjoyed it as well. Great call to action, great substance behind that call to action. And both your personal experiences, you know, just um, adds an imprimatur to everything you've said. Thank you so much. I know it's um, first thing in the morning at home. Um, have yourself a very, very good day. And thanks so much for being with us again. Bye. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Bye. Bye-bye.